In this video I will give a brief demonstration of my Creed 7B teleprinter. These magnificent machines were once the workhorse for transfer of text messages. They were widely used by news agencies. And the Creed 7B played a critical role in message transfer at Bletchley Park during World War II. More recently, teleprinters were also used by radio amateurs before the arrival of personal computers. More than 100,000 7Bs were built, but very few remain. You typically need two teleprinters where a message is keyed in on one machine and printed out on both. I've only got one machine. To mimic a second teleprinter, I built a piece of circuitry controlled by a microprocessor. Let me show you how this works before going into further details. When I start the machine it runs a motor at about 3000 rpm. That motor drives the various elements of the printer. I will explain the operation later. First I enter a message on my computer and I send it via Wi-Fi to the teleprinter. I select Creed from the list of Wi-Fi networks. The address of the Creed server is 192.168.4.1. This brings up a simple web page. Here I enter a message for the printer. There is also a demo option to print a pre-programmed message. That demo is run when I flip this switch. This is a Creed teleprinter, it says. Quite impressive, isn't it? This concludes the brief demonstration. Do you want to hear more? Just hang on. From the early days of telegraphy, various people have attempted to transfer text using some kind of typewriter. Here is a machine built by Siemens and Halske in the late 1800s. The Creed 7B was invented in the early 1930s by Frederick George Creed. By that time his company was already established in Croydon, England. Fred Creed was born in 1871 in Nova Scotia, Canada. He started work as a telegraph operator and he moved to Glasgow around 1900. There he invented a machine to turn text into Morse code and vice versa. Later he resorted to a modified Baudot code with start and stop bits to get a more reliable method of character transfer. For his teleprinters, Creed was inspired by the telegraph printers of the Morcrum Company of Chicago. Let's have a look at the Murray coding method used by the Creed 7B. A message could be sent directly, but many machines had a tape puncher. A message would be entered by keyboard and punched in tape at a low speed. Once completed, it could then be transmitted at the maximum speed of 60 words per minute. Each character is represented by 7 bits in Murray code. The character starts with a zero, or a space as it's called, then five bits follow, and the seventh bit is a stop bit, which is a mark. Let's see how a character is transmitted from a teleprinter. I will turn the motor manually to slowly demonstrate what happens. Each key of the keyboard can hold back one or more sliders when they are activated by the motor spindle. The letter F is coded as mark space mark mark space. Now watch again how the sliders move. These sliders are connected to the transmitter behind this door. Here we see a couple of miniature switches. I will manually operate the machine again while pressing the F key. Watch the movement of the black lever with the knife edge at the top. You see the lever flipping from left to right 
when directed by the fork or the striker. The lever operates the coding switch. The left contacts send a space, the right contacts send a mark. There is another switch here at the top. That switch controls the receiving and transmitting operation. It closes the transmit contacts as soon as a key is pressed and opens them again once the code is completed. Have a look again. Remember that an F is represented as mark space, mark, mark, space. Also be aware that the first bit is a space and the last bit is a mark. Now let's go to the receiver and printer side. The receiver includes two electromagnets under this cover. One of the magnets is activated on receiving a zero or a space, the other reacts when a one or mark is received. The magnets move this arm by a few millimeters. That arm is connected to a flat bar that can move up and down also by a few millimeters. Let us mimic the receiving of the character F. The start bit is a space that will hold the bar down. The next bit is a mark. The bar moves up and the pin is pushed against the first finger. That finger sets a lock inside the drum on the left. The next bit is a space and the pin is not pushed out. The second finger stays in place. The following two bits are marks and the respective fingers move, thereby setting locks inside the drum. The last character bit is a space, so again the pin is not pushing a finger out. The locks inside the drum stop the letter wheel at the position of the received character. During the next cycle, a hammer is pushed against the letter wheel to print the received character. The printing is one cycle behind the receiving. Therefore, a message always has to end with a space. The movement of the various levers is controlled by the tracks in this cam sleeve. Here is the letter F as it has just been printed. It is a bit faint. The hammer will hit the print head harder during normal operation, so the visibility will be better. By the way, I managed to revive the ink cartridge that had dried out. I soaked the cartridge in ink for a while. The movements are very fast. At speed, the printer can receive 60 words per minute. A word has on average 6 characters. With 6 characters per second and 7 bits per character, it takes about 25 milliseconds to send a space or a mark. 40 bits per second was pretty fast in those days. It's easy to take off the print carriage and put it back again. Let me show you the letter wheel. The letter wheel can rotate when the machine is running. As I showed earlier, for each character there are fingers moved into the drum behind the wheel. These fingers operate locks that hold the wheel in position for a short while at the location of the respective character. The wheel is released again once the hammer has struck the print head. There are a number of levers that move the print carriage after each character and return the carriage at the end of a line. You saw me starting the machine with this handle. This lever is connected to a switch. 
it operates the switch under gravity. The weight that operates the switch is slowly pulled up if no characters are received. At some point, it switches the machine off. Let's now have a look at the schematics of the box that controls the machine. Here is the inside of that box. I do not have the female parts for the two plugs of the machine, so I constructed these myself. The motor requires about 100 volt DC. I put two Meanwell 48 volt supplies in series to run the motor. One of these supplies then feeds the mark and space electromagnets. The WeMOS microcontroller generates 5 volt pulses either on D1 to send a mark or on D2 to send a space. These pulses switch the respective electromagnets using TIP 3055 power transistors. The transmitting from the microcontroller is inhibited when the keyboard is used. The Arduino code for the WeMOS module is available on GitHub. Further information on the Creed 7B can be found on the internet. I hold a copy of the operating manual. This is the schematic of the machine itself. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know what you think. Have a look at my other videos. Until next time, goodbye.